Hey guys, One Piece Nation here today to bring you my review of One Piece Chapter 852. This is like my third time recording this, so I'm kind of pissed. But no, let's talk about Riju and Sanji. So first of all, I want to talk about, talk about Riju regeneration ability. The doctor comments on Riju's ability to regenerate her tough skin. So we can add that to the list of things the Big Smoke can do besides all of their tech, you know, science and their cloning. And yeah, we can add a regener good regeneration, good healing, and tough skin. Okay, now, Sanji, of course, tells Riju what Pudding did. And then. Sanji proceeds to have a conversation with Riju about what they're going to do next. And Riju kind of like, oh, screw it, let us all die. We deserve to die anyway. The so Riju thinks they deserve to die. And I really like what Oda's doing here. And Sanji does not want to save Riju because she saved him. It's not about repaying a debt. It's about doing what's right. She just sister, and she's one of the few people that actually treated him somewhat decently. Now, I'm going to talk about all the Riju and Sanji stuff, and all the Luffy, Nani, and Jinbei stuff in two segments, just so you know. Alright, so it can, nor with the Riju and Sanji stuff happening, we get the flashback with their mother, when we find out that she took a drug to try to stop the children from becoming modified humans. That, of course, failed for the three of them. The first three, but she took one before she had Sanji. The so she didn't do it for the first three, but when having Sanji, she took a pill so Sanji would not become, you know, this emotionless killer. And it worked. There have been constant complaints about Sanji making lump spots. Sanji actually made his mother a lump spot more than once. He was cooking with the chefs, he was doing all the human stuff. And the judge was like, screw you, and then his wife died because of the drug. So his wife is dead, and he had this weak ass kid here that had emotions. And judge is just kind of pissed off. Now I'm not saying judge is a bad guy, he kind of is. But he's not the worst kind of guy. He did spare his son. He, he did say he couldn't kill his own child. No, there are worse people. There are people like Dolphamingo who murdered their own father in cold blood. I mean, c comparatively speaking, it's not that bad. But if we're being realistic, the big thing in this chapter when Riju and Sanji is, of course, Sanji find out his bracelet are fake. That tests me off. Alright, I'm kind of not angry as I am because I ranted in the original recording, but let me explain something to you. These bracelets have been a Deus Ex Machina from day one. And since day one, I have not liked them, and I have made that clear that I have problems with this. I have problems with the fact that Sanji did not just arm it up his hand, cover his hand for arm hockey, take off the bracelet. I have a problem with that. It doesn't make sense. The logical thing to do is just use arm and hockey, take off the bracelet. But no, Sonny doesn't do that. Now we find out they're fake. Now I get it, they're holding that over his head. But the, the, Sonny kicked his captain in the face. I have a feeling that they didn't have his hands. Kester, Sonny may have been like, you know what, Luffy? You can probably stay, you'll probably find a way to help us keep that safe. I believe in you, let's kick Big Mom back, and just kick that. And that is the only thing. But no, his hand and that were in danger. So, what is the logical thing to do? Do nothing. Don't try to escape. And he agreed to marry Pudding and all of this. But all of this happened. All of this. Well, the bracelets were hot. And nobody could figure out why Sonya wouldn't break out of them. Right? Nobody could figure it out. No one could. And now we're like, well, I guess he could have broken out because they're freaking fake. I'm sorry. It's stupid. 
I I don't like. Oh, I really like One Piece, and I don't like insulting it or telling Oda he messed up. But Oda, this isn't good. This isn't a twist. And when I was like, "What the hell?" in my reaction, I was not like, "What the hell, Oda?" Like this is such a twist. I was like, "What the hell? Why would you do that? It's stupid." I didn't rant much in my reaction because I wanted to save it for a critical breakdown in the review. But it's a Deus Ex Machina. It's contrived, it's overly convenient, and it's stupid. And you know the problem with that? Try to explain to me how the perfect One Piece had... Try to explain it. Give me your reason. You know, I know people don't like it when people back One Piece, but I'm doing it. Because guess what? That was dumb. Alright. Another thing I want to talk about. Not much more at Radio and Sanji. I'm just trying to make sure I covered everything. You know, I covered everything. So, you know, there is this great thing where Radio is like, go to your friend, forget about me, get it together, Sanji. There's a lot of, there's a, there's a lot of great stuff this chapter. Just with the relationship between Sanji and Radio. It's like, this. It's like, it's weird. It's not a healthy relation. It's not a healthy, good, like, get along, friends relationship. It's kind of like a relationship that's kind of like, listen, I didn't, listen, I treated you like a human being, somewhat like a human being. I was decent, I was relatively nice to you, and you're grateful for that. And we're, we attack, and we're brother and sister. So, we're in this kind of situation together, but it's very odd, and, you know, it's just a, it's a very odd relationship, and a very interesting thing it play out. Now, I noticed that at the end of Rage U, some people are saying she may die. I'm going to be completely honest, and I've said this before. Oda's not going to kill off a character like Rage U to kill her off. Oda only likes killing off characters when it's absolutely necessary for the plot and story progression. And I really don't see a reason for Riju to die. Or for Jinbei to die. But speaking of Jinbei, let's talk about that. So Jinbei had to uh, burn the book to explain, to help Luffy and Nami escape. Now, so the way I understand it is that by burning the book, he somehow like deactivated the devil fruit ability. Like, I don't really understand how burning the book got Luffy and Nami out of there. He did use his fifth man karate to put it out, but you would assume, you know, his water manipulation, you would assume if you're stuck in a book, you're stuck in a book. Putting fire on the book wouldn't make you magically hop out of the book. But in this case, it did. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I think it's kind of weird, but I'm just going to chalk it up to that type of devil fruit works. The devil fruits have a tendency to work in very odd ways. I mean, look at sugar devil fruit. Like, if she went to sleep or fainted at all, the effect of a devil fruit stopped working. I mean, that's just, like, could, is that really a normal conclusion you would come to, that putting never sleeps because she needs to be away for her power to work? No, you would think it just works all the time. But, I'll put it through the same thing here. The book does not, the book will force the people out if it's damaged to a certain degree. That's just how the devil fruit works, I guess. So they get out, um, not many clothes are burned off, but with, unfortunately there was no close-up panels on that. I'm kidding, but I don't know, I bet some of you wanted that. But no, but um, so they're a little burned up, but they're pretty much fine. They get up, they talk, talk, they talk to Jinbei briefly, like a thank you and all. So Luffy talks about how Pudding lied to them and tricked them. And it's like, we need to tell Sanji, because Luffy, of course, doesn't know that Sanji knows. So Luffy wants to go tell Sanji. Uh, that was not in the plan for the review, but whatever. I'm too tired to, to cut it out, so throw no, but, so Luffy talks to Jimbe and Nami, and he pretty much tells them, I'm gonna go find Sanji, and he starts running off and proceeds to collapse. Luffy then announces that he is hungry. 
Now, this is my understanding of it. So, Jim made comment that, what the hell, like, why are you worried about your stomach right now? Nami then comment, Luffy uses up three times as much energy as a normal person. And we were lit, at, mentioned at some point in the chapter that it had been about a day since Luffy and Nami were in prison, from what I understand. <laughs> so, Luffy had gone like a day without eating. He hasn't eaten into this fight with Sanji. And thinking of the fight with Sanji, what I really liked about the thing where Luffy's like, I'm hungry. I like how he's not like, I'm hungry, I want to eat. He's like, I'm hungry and it really sucks. Because I can't eat anything that isn't cooked by Sanji. And I, I'm all for that. Like, I really like the way that it's being handled. I was worried that it was going to be something that Oda was kind of going to forget about. Or it was going to be glanced over like Nami or and Jim that were going to force him to eat. No, Luffy's not eating. Now, Luffy goes off and starts fighting, of course. There's this one thing where he hops on top of this giant, like, giant soldier. And he's like, where is Sanji? And I don't know why, but it just, it was a really funny looking panel. It kind of made me chuckle a little bit when rereading it. But, um, so Luffy's looking for Sanji. So Smoothie and the other soldiers are un contacted, of course. And I feel like a big role in their escape will be the fact that the people that work under Big Mom are afraid of Big Mom. And they don't want to tell her that Luffy and Nami are having escaped and that Jinbei had betrayed them. Because, let me explain something to you. Big Mom is one of the Yonko. They're afraid of what she'll do because she has been looking forward to tomorrow's tea party clack wedding for a long time. They're kind of worried that she may, like, freak the hell out. So they're worried that she may freak the hell out and, like, destroy them all or kill a ton of people or destroy half the island. Who knows? One pissed off Yoko, like, one pissed off Whitebeard nearly destroyed all of Marine Headquarters. So, I mean, what Big Mom could do, but she probably, debatably, I don't know enough to say that for sure, but most likely stronger than a 72-year-old dying man. Come at me. Come at me. No, but I honestly understand that, and I feel like that will play a major role in the escape. That Sanji, not the Sanji, that Big Mom will be involved. That they just need to get past some commanders and some people like that. Now, the commanders will be tough. But I feel like if they sneak around enough, all they need to do is all, all of them meet up. Which, honestly, even if they all meet up, if they all meet up and manage to escape, when the minute Big Mom finds out, she's going to try to kill them. She's probably going to actively try to kill them. So my question is, when will they be safe? They can't, because Big Mom going to actively try to kill them. And then they're going to go mess with Kaido? It's like, what? Like, they're going to have to find the guy a compromise with Big Mom to make her leave them the hell alone. Because at the moment, they're, they got their hands full with Big Mom. But, I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover with this review. Oh, that radio with Sanji. Oh, at the very end, you see Luffy running, and he's like, Move! And he's like, I'm coming, Sanji. Very nice scene. Now, uh, we're on break next week, so there will be no review. I'll see what I can do about getting some content for you guys on Thursday. May, may not be green screen, kind of highly edited skit stuff. But, you know, I'll get you guys something if I can. But... Yeah, that's about all I have to say. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave it a like. Uh, share the video if you liked it as well. Check out my Facebook and my Twitter, which are in the description box down below. Um, and subscribe for more One Piece videos. I do a One Piece review and live reaction every week. I would also like to quickly state here for anybody who has been watching my Naruto reviews. The Naruto review will be done tomorrow. As I said, I had the problem recording this, and I want to use the green screen and do a lot of highly edited jokes and skits for my Naruto One Piece review. So, yeah, the Naruto review will be tomorrow, and tomorrow is Friday, and I'll have the time to do it. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed.
like the video, and above all, guys, have a great day. The One Peak Nation, signing out.